Hello everyone, Hobbyist here, back at it again with our Citadel's character guides, and this time, we are going to be talking about the Rank 2 characters. Now, in my previous video, we talked about the Rank 1 characters and how, essentially, they have a higher priority, they get the early jump in comparison to these guys. These guys are going to be following directly after them. The key thing from an overview standpoint is that a lot of the abilities of the rank 2 characters, even though they go earlier than everybody else inside of citadels, oftentimes can't interact with the rank 1 characters. So that's just something to keep in mind regardless of if you pick the thief, the blackmailer, or the spy. So let's go ahead and get into that first the character. The first character that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the classic thief. Now, the Thief has been a character that's been around since the original publication of Citadels. And his ability consists of being able to call the character you wish to rob. When the robbed character is revealed, you take all of his gold. Pretty straightforward ability. Basically, you want to go after the rich people and be able to get your luck in from stealing from the rich people. The key thing that I mentioned earlier in my overview about the rank 2 characters falls true mostly specific to the Thief. Because the Thief cannot rob any of the rank 1 characters, the Assassin, the Magistrate, and the Witch, nor can he rob anyone who's been killed by the Assassin, or anyone who has been bewitched by the Witch. So it's a little bit difficult in that regard, because you pretty much are just out of luck with those people. But honestly, when it comes to getting gold quick, almost nobody does it better than the thief. However, there's one character that I think does. If you decide that you no longer want to play with the thief because the thief is just too classic, too boring, you're experienced in Citadels enough to where you want to try out something different, the blackmailer is a perfect replacement. So the blackmailer can get way more gold than the thief ever can in a very interesting way because the blackmailer has this ability she assigns threats face down to character tokens a threatened player can bribe the blackmailer half of his gold rounded down to remove his threat if you reveal the flower then the blackmailer gets to take all of the gold from that person so that's incredibly huge just as a show real quick, as you can tell, one of them has the flower and one of them is blank. When it comes to what they look like on the back, they're just the blackmailer's threats that are face down. So she works in the same regards as the magistrate as far as the only other character in the game that has tokens that interact with other characters. So, if you're on the receiving end of the blackmailer, you kind of have to decide for yourself. Should I just go ahead and pay to get the threat taken away from? Or do I take the risk of losing all of my gold? Because it's only a 50-50 chance that you're either getting robbed or the threat is all for nothing and that it's just for show. So while the magistrate can take cities from other people who are being built, the blackmailer can take gold. So. It's a very interesting thing that can happen with the blackmailer. In pretty much in the same regards as the thief can't do anything to the rank 1 characters, the blackmailer cannot threaten any of the rank 1 characters, as well as any of characters who have gotten killed or bewitched. However, when it comes to the magistrate's ability to put the warrants on any characters, she can assign her blackmail threats to those same characters so you can kind of have a chain reaction of bad events to where your districts are getting stolen and then you have to worry about if you're going to get robbed from the blackmailer or not so it's definitely very interesting last character that we have inside of citadels is that we have the spy who was the last rank two character out of the selection so you can choose to put the thief in the game you can choose to put the blackmailer in the game or you could choose to put the spy in the game. What the spy can do is that the spy, when he reveals his card, names a district's type and looks at another player's hand. For each card type that that player has that you called, you get to take one of his gold 
and get a card from the deck. So, essentially, you have the most information inside of citadels, period. And what makes it really good is that you can pretty much base it off of what you think everybody is going to do. So you can be like, Joe, I'm going to call out religious districts. So then you get to look at his hand and see, okay, he has one, two, three, four religious districts in his hand. Which in that case, you get four gold and four cards. Which is huge. That doesn't even consider what your regular turn is going to look like as far as gathering resources to either take two gold or two cards and selecting an additional one. So, if you manage to target the right people and do it at the right time, you get a huge boost in stuff before everybody else. In fact, you'll probably end up getting more gold than any of the characters that require a specific district type to be built in the first place, especially as they get more expensive. So, yeah, I honestly say that my tie for my favorite rank 2 character has to be in between the spy and the blackmailer. But otherwise, I hope you guys found this video good for you, and I will see you in the next video.